Welcome to this video from In 28 Minutes. Thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms, Udemy, Safari and Pact. Let's welcome our lead instructor, Rangarao Karanam. In this video, let's discuss about the different challenges with building your microservices. We'll start with the problem number one, which is bounded context. What do I mean? Earlier, we said instead of one big monolith application, we would be building about five small microservices or 10 or 20 or 100. How do you identify the boundary for each of these microservices? How do you identify what to do in each of these microservices? How do you decide what you should do and what you should not do? The thing is, for new applications, this is especially much more difficult because probably you don't really have the business knowledge to be able to establish the right boundaries between these microservices. What I found in my experience is deciding the boundaries of microservices is an evolutionary process. It's not something you would get it right the first time. It's something which you need to play around with. Try and follow domain driven design. Try to identify the right boundaries for the microservices based on the knowledge you have at that point in time. The important thing to understand is as you keep gaining knowledge, you should put that knowledge back into the microservices, into deciding what is the right boundaries for these microservices. The next important challenge for microservices is configuration management. We said we would have 5 or 50 microservices. These microservices have multiple instances in each environment and there are multiple environments. So let's say there are 10 microservices with 5 environments and let's say 50 instances. So we are talking about basically tons of configuration and that's a lot of work for the operation team to maintain. Third important challenge is the dynamic scale up and scale down. Establishing the technology to be able to do that. The loads on different microservices will be different at different instances of time. And at particular instance, I might need two instances of microservice too. But later, at a different point in time, I might be needing 10 instances of this. So I should be able to bring the new instances of microservices up and bring down older instances of microservices when they are not really needed. All this with dynamic load balancing because when there is one instance of microservice 1 and there are four instances of microservice 2, then I would want to distribute the load between all the instances of microservice 2. And if there are four instances of microservice 2 coming up, then I would want to ensure that all the new ones are also being used to the fullest extent. So we need the ability to dynamically bring in new instances and also to distribute the load among the new instances. The fourth and one of the most important challenges is visibility. If I say the functionality is now distributed among 10 microservices and there is a bug, how do you identify where the bug is? You need to have a centralized log where I can go and find out what happened for a specific request which microservice caused the problem. Not just that, we also need monitoring around these microservices because we have hundreds of microservices. We need to be able to identify the microservices which are down. We would want to be able to automatically identify servers where there is not enough disk space. All these kind of things need to be automated. So we need great visibility into what's happening with these microservices. And the last, but not the least important of them is the fact that if it's not well designed, microservices architectures can be like pack of cards. What do I mean? It's basically that in microservices architectures, you have one microservice calling another, another calling another. So there would be certain microservices which would be the fundamental for the whole thing. And if that microservice goes down, then the entire application might go down. So it's like a pack of cards. You're building one over the top of the other and so on and so on. And therefore, they can collapse very easily. And therefore, it's very important for you to have fault tolerance in your microservices. 
In this video, we looked at the five important challenges related to microservices. We started with bounded context, identifying what is the right context for your microservice, what is the right boundary for your right microservice. We talked about the problem of configuration management. Hundreds of microservices and a lot of environments, there is tons of configuration that you would want to manage. How do we simplify that? We would want to be able to dynamically scale up and scale down and dynamically distribute load among the active instances. How do we do that? We want to have great visibility into what's happening behind the scenes with each of these microservices. A simple request might involve 10 microservices. How do I determine which microservice was the cause for a defect? How do I know if all my microservices are up and running? And how do I prevent one microservice being down, taking down the entire application? How do I build fault tolerance into my microservices? Until the next step, bye-bye. In 28 minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. The question is, what do you want to learn next? We are building solutions to help programmers at all levels. You can learn programming with our awesome courses on Java, Python and JavaScript. You can learn full stack development with REST APIs and microservices with a wide range of frameworks like Spring Boot, Node.js, React, Angular and Spring Cloud. We have 200 plus videos to help you start your journey from a programmer to a software architect. We have videos to help you learn frameworks, industry trends, including things like microservices, learn the best practices in architecture, design and code quality. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.